Hey everybody, John Peterson from John Peterson Photography and today I wanted to show you a quick tip on using some of the masking functionality in Adobe Lightroom. You know, with the, with the recent updates in Lightroom, it's becoming a more and more powerful editing tool, which is fantastic. Absolutely love it. And they've really made masking very easy to use for most people who don't want to go through the learning curve of Photoshop. So it's a really wonderful tool to isolate certain parts of your image and apply creative edits by using masks. Now, the masking tool is great. Sometimes, though, it's challenged to create as good of a mask as you might want. So in this quick little tip, I'm going to show you how to apply some edits to a mask to help refine the selection that the computer made. All right, let's dive in and take a look. All right, folks, let's jump in and take a look at this image. This was shot uh, this just this past January up in Iceland, and I was there leading a workshop, and we had walked out onto a frozen lagoon uh, for sunrise. And I happened to find these cracks with these frozen air bubbles underneath the ice and thought that would make a a nice little shot, sort of a, a Icelandic Abraham Lake, if you will. Now, one of the things about this shot that I wanted to edit was the sky. The sky is really boring. It's bright. It's kind of the brightest part of the image. And I wanted to tone that down visually. So I thought, well, let's create a mask with Lightroom. So in Lightroom, if I go to my masking tool, and I go to create new mask and go to select sky. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And as I look at the mask, I can see how it's feathering onto the ice here. And then I can see how you see the pink color that's over the mountains here. And then the pink color on this distant mountain, the, the software had a challenging time figuring out the delineation between the sky and the earth. And so it took its best guess and it didn't do that great of a job on this image. Now I'd like to zoom in and see how this does um, or, or see the effects of this mask. And here's the first tip for you. You know, normally when we're in a module, we can click on the image and it'll do an automatic zoom. But when you're in the mask mode, if I clicked, it won't do anything. I just my cursor is the same so what you need to do is you need to hold down the sh the uh, the space bar hold down the space bar and you can see how the cursor changes to a plus and then you left click to zoom in let go of the space bar and I can zoom into the image and see the effects of the automatic mask that was created so over here on the right, this is looking pretty good. Not a lot of the mask bled onto the ice. But I can see this distant mountain here. I'm getting some of that pink color. I'm getting pink color down the face. And I'm getting a lot of pink color through here. So I want to fix this. No matter how many times I try to do this in Lightroom, it's always going to kind of create this mask. So I need to manually edit this mask. And the best way to do that is by using the subtract button. So I created a sky mask and now I want to remove areas from this mask. So when I hit subtract, it gives me an option for how do I want to select areas to remove from the mask. And in this case, I want to use the brush tool because it gives me a uh, control over irregular shapes. So let me go ahead and select brush. And instantly you can see how my cursor changed to the brush cursor. It's a particular size and there's a there's the minus key right in the middle of the brush, so that's saying that we're subtracting from an existing mask. Now, if you want to adjust the size of your brush, you have sliders over here that you can adjust, which is great. 
or you can use the bracket keys on your keyboard. Left bracket key makes it smaller, right bracket key makes it larger. You can adjust the feather. You can adjust the flow. Now the flow is, to me, really important. It's like the opacity of the brush. So how much of the effect do you want applied with one brush stroke? 100% or 10%? And this, is, this flow slider is one of the best ways to fine tune and have a nuanced approach to editing masks or even just applying original masks is you can build up layers of brush strokes by having small flow. So let's go ahead and try to subtract the mountains from the sky mask. And I'm going to go with a 50% flow. And you can see as I paint over the pink, the pink disappears. So I'm subtracting the mask areas. And what I want to do is I want to decrease my feather so I have a little bit of a harder line that I can really just sort of fine tune the mountain as much as possible. Let me go through and paint all of this. You, you kind of see the effect. So I'm going to work my way through the image. and remove the mask as best as I can. I'm going to make it a little bit larger. I'll come up here and just do the mountain. Get small to do the peak of the mountain. And this ridge line. Oop. You know, and if there's, if there's overages, you can go back if you want. And then to move the image, again, I'm holding down the space bar and the hand tool comes. So then I can drag the image over if I want. So we'll just kind of go through and do this real quick. And there you go. So now I've got this mask where I want it, and now I can make some edits to it. So I'm going to drop the exposure down just a little bit. I'm going to add a little blue back into it, get rid of some of that gray, and I'm done. You know, I went from that to that. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Now, kind of continuing on with that brush tool, Let's say I wanted to pop these uh, bubbles, these frozen bubbles, down here a little bit. So what I could do is go up here, create a mask, go to my brush. I may want to feather the brush a little bit. And I'm going to stick with around a 50% flow because I kind of want to build up the effects that I want to do. Maybe just a little bit more feather to work with. Now I want to decrease the size with my brush using the less left bracket key and I'm going to paint the brush into here and I wanted a little bit more of a feather so just in case I you know I don't want to be have to be perfect on the edges so I wanted to feather the effect a little bit and create a little bit of a transition zone where it goes from bright to dark so let's say I want to pop these. I may increase the exposure just a little bit, increase the whites a little bit. So just by, you know, flow and feathering and, and gently painting my brush, I can do a wonderful adjustment from that to that. Real simple, real easy. So remember your left bracket keys, your flow, and your feather are the keys to really successfully navigating the brush tool in Lightroom. And remember the subtract button. Always remember the subtract button where you can remove elements of that mask. Likewise, if you make a mistake, I can go back and add in 
mask where I want. And so I would just do the inverse of subtract. I would add, I would go brush, and then I would paint back in those areas that I maybe went over the mountains up into the sky. All right, well, there you go. There's a, some quick and easy tips for using the Lightroom masking functionality. The subtract and the add button are extremely powerful tools for editing masks that are generated by the program. You know, as I showed, uh, the program isn't perfect, and uh, but it's come a long way, which is great. And sometimes we just need to fine tune a few things. So, you know, using the, the add and subtract function, and then for me, I often edit masks with the brush. There's some more complex examples where I might do a system generated mask and then use a linear gradient to fade that mask into the rest of the image. But that's maybe for another video. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, feel free to experiment to your heart's content. Remember, all of these things are not permanent, so you can delete masks very easy. Start over again if you don't like the results. So thanks for watching. Have a great day and stay tuned for more videos. All right. Bye-bye, folks.